Generation Iron 2. Will ingesting an insect hormone help you to grow bigger muscles? That's the question I'm going to look at today. Now, <laughs> you weren't probably wondering, why am I talking about insect hormones? Well, the reason for this is because these insect hormones, collectively known as ectosteroids, are being sold in supplements and touted as anabolic substances. In fact, they are often compared to anabolic steroids in promoting muscular growth. I'll explain why in a moment, but let's just discuss what they are. Now, why are they called ectosteroids? And what are they? Okay, ectosteroids are found in some plants, which I'll also get into in a minute, but they're used in by, by insects. They're produced in insects' bodies to promote a process called molting. Which is, uh, which is where the insect actually sheds its exoskeleton or its shell. Uh, this is done to allow growth in the insect. So you could say that ectosteroids are a indirect growth factor in insects. Uh, now, the reason they, they're called ectosteroids is because the process of molting is scientifically called it's, 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 it's called ectosis. It's a little hard to pronounce. Ectosis. It's a scientific term for the molting of insects, uh, which is stimulated by these ectos, ectosteroids. So now you can see where they got their name now. Why did they attract the attention of scientists? Uh, actually, it was a Russian scientist that really first noticed this. They have a structural similarity to testosterone, to human androgens such as testosterone. And this is not really, this is to be expected. Because if you look at the process of synthesis of ectosteroids in an insect's body, it's actually produced from a, uh, well, actually plants is where they notice this. It's produced from plant sterols. Plant sterols are the plant equivalent of cholesterol. And in humans, testosterone and other androgens are also produced from cholesterol. So this stuff is structurally similar to testosterone. And the Russians wanted to investigate it because, well, they wanted to see if it had any athletic uses. You know, the Russians and the East Germans years ago, they were always big on, on dominating international athletics, and they, they looked for anything that would give them a boost. So they decided to investigate the possible anabolic properties of, uh, of these uh, ectosteroids. Now, there's 400 of them are known to exist, but the truth is that the majority of ectosteroids are not available orally. In other words, they just don't do anything. There's only a select few that have been shown in scientific studies to be absorbable and to possibly do something in the human body. Uh, the most popular ectosteroids that have been examined include ectosterone, turkosterone. Turkosterone is considered the most anabolic of all the uh, uh, ectosteroids, and I'll tell you why in a, in a minute. And they also have one called 20-hydroxy ectosome, or 20E. 20E has been the one that's been, in the Russian studies, has been examined and shown the most benefit to athletes, which I'll also get into in a minute. But one study actually showed that turkosterone produced greater anabolic effects in animals than did the anabolic steroid drug Nerobol. Now, you, most of you probably never heard of Nerobol. But Nerobol, it was an early trade name for methandrostenolone, which you probably heard of the more familiar trade name for, for this drug, which is Dianabol. So <laughs> one study, Russian study, actually found that on a, uh, let's say, a weight-for-weight -weight basis, this stuff called, this, this ectosteroid called turcosterone was actually more potent in producing uh, anabolic effects in muscle than Dianabol. That's saying a lot because Dianabol was one of the most popular anabolic steroids. It was an oral steroid. It was the most popular anabolic steroids ever produced. In the 60s and the 70s, all the competitive bodybuilders were using Dianabol or methandrostenolone. Now, the Russian study suggested that ectosteroids are com comparable to anabolic steroids in their effects on promoting muscular growth 
But unlike uh, steroids, the ectosteroids do not interact with androgen receptors. Let me explain what I mean. Anabolic steroids and testosterone itself uh, work by interacting with, with what is called an androgen cell receptor. Unless the hormones or the steroids interact with the androgen cell receptor, there is no anabolic effects. And it turns out that the ectosteroids, whatever anabolic effects they produce, it's not through the androgen receptor. And I just want to also clarify, uh, just in case you're wondering, ectosteroids do not, I repeat, they do not increase testosterone levels, no matter what you might read on some internet websites or blogs. They do not. In other words, uh, th that's been said because of the fact that they supposedly work like steroids, but they are not, they do not increase testosterone in the human body. What they do, however, do is they're thought to boost muscle protein synthesis. Now, one of the main anabolic effects of anabolic steroids is to boost muscle protein synthesis. So in that regard, ectosteroids are similar to anabolic steroids. Uh, in the uh, studies done by the Russians, the average increase in muscle protein synthesis produced by ectosteroids averaged, averaged about 20% above baseline, which isn't really bad. The exact or pr the precise mechanism for this isn't known, but there is a couple of uh, theories. One is that the ectosteroids increase what they call calcium flux, or the entry of calcium ions into into the muscle, which which rapidly stimulates a enzyme, a protein enzyme called AKT, or protein kinase B. I know this is a little bit complicated, but the point being. This AKT is definitely a uh, definitely heavily involved in muscle protein synthesis, and coincidentally is also stimulated by both amino acids and anabolic steroids. Uh, now, uh, some studies have suggested that uh, another possible way that ectosteroids could be anabolic is that they boost the uh, uptake into cells of the branch chain amino acid leucine. Now, many of you might know leucine is, uh, the, is the amino acid, the single most potent amino acid in terms of promoting muscle protein synthesis. So if ectosteroids actually does boost the uptake of leucine, that alone would definitely produce an anabolic effect in muscle. I already mentioned the AKD, uh, AKT effect. Uh, but I should also point out most, and this is an important point, most or nearly all of the anabol positive anabolic effects associated with ectosteroids have been found in animals and isolated cell studies, isolated muscle cell studies. Almost all these studies have involved animals. There's very few human studies. I'll talk about the few human studies right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, in fact, a couple of the human studies from Russia showed some really remarkable effects of the ectosteroids. One study involved 78 athletes who ingested 20 hydroxy ectosterone, that's one of the ectosteroids, for 10 days. The dose was 5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. The results after only 10 days showed a 7%, I can't help laughing, a 7% increase in lean mass along with a 10% fat loss with no hormonal side effects. Now this is in this is in, in, in 10 days, a little over a week. I mean, I don't think steroids can produce that, that great a gain. <laughs> but remember, this is a Russian study. And back then, the Russian studies were kind of shoddy and known for their lack of quality control. So, you know, but anyway, I'm just, I'm just reading it off, telling you what they found. Another study of uh, 20 ectosterone uh, in 112 athletes for five days showed significant increases in speed and strength. So, you know, it was only, a, you know, then the uh, ectosteroids, because of these Russian uh, studies, they were discovered by a couple of supplement companies who started selling them and and, packaged, and uh, touting them as uh, natural anabolics. Uh, we, we've all heard that term before, uh, but you know, so this attracted the attention of American scientists. And there was one study published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Metabolism back in 2006. It provided a dose of 200 milligrams a day of sumarut. Which is which that provided 60 milligrams of ectosterone, ectosterone, and it, this was provided to 45 subjects between the ages of 18 and 29, and and they took the supplement or a placebo for one to six months. Now all the men in the study were experienced in weight training and were engaged in weight training throughout the course of the study. Some of the subjects, as I said, ingested a placebo. 
What did the study results show? The study results showed no difference in the results between those who ingested the placebo and those who ingested the ectosterone. No changes in body composition, no changes in muscle protein synthesis, no changes in fat loss, nothing, nada, zero. Based on this, the researchers concluded that ectosteroids provide no anabolic effects in humans. That's the one, as far as I know, the one Western human study that looked at ectosteroids. But, you know, I, I don't want you to, I, I don't want to just like end it here and say that ectosteroids are junk and are useless, you know, and, you know, the Russian studies were garbage and, you know, the American study found nothing. I, I'll explain why I feel this way in a second. But I just also want to point out that besides being produced in insects, uh, some ecstasteroids uh, also exist naturally in plants, and in, and some are found in uh, natural foods and in fairly good amounts. For example, spinach is a good source of 20-hydroxyectosterone, which is the same ectosteroid that the Russians showed significantly improved athletic performance in their top-level athletes. And uh, again, spinach is a great natural source. There's a grain called canino, can can canoa. I'm probably mispronouncing that, so don't get on me for that. It's Q-U-I-N-O-A. Uh, it's sold in cereals you can get in the supermarket. It's an excellent source of several ectosteroids. And ectosteroids are also found in a favorite bodybuilding food, yams. So they're found naturally in those foods. Uh, from, a, uh, from a health standpoint, ectosteroids uh, can lower, these Russian studies also show, that it, it's actually pretty good at lowering elevated blood cholesterol and elevated blue blood glucose levels, which means possibly they could be of use in treating people with, uh, let's say, uh, heart disease or diabetes or, or pre-diabetes or insulin sensitivity. That has to, that has yet to be actually examined in American Western studies, but the Russians have shown that it does seem to affect those things. Now, here's the reason why. I wouldn't completely dismiss ectosteroids right now as an anabolic substance. The reason is they, they discovered that ectosteroids can interact with, with what is called estrogen B cell receptors. Now, although there's only one androgen receptor, there are two types of estrogen receptors. One is called estrogen receptor A. The other one's called estrogen receptor B. Now, a couple of years ago, they discovered, and I wrote about this in an article in a bodybuilding magazine, they discovered a unique property of estrogen receptor B. Turns out that estrogen receptor B activates muscle stem cells known as satellite cells that are heavily involved in the muscle repair process and the muscle hypertrophy process. In other words, satellite cells are involved in promoting muscular growth. And estrogen B directly stimulates the activity of these satellite cells. Now, and this is a reason why you bodybuilders that are taking steroids and are also taking uh, drugs that block estrogen, such as the aromatase inhibitors, such as arimidix, you should be concerned a little bit about this because um, lowering the estrogen too much actually will inhibit the activity of satellite cells. And it turns out that the ectosteroids also stimulate these uh, estrogen B receptors. So in that situation, they could possibly be anabolic. This, again, has yet to be examined in a, in a true, you know, solidly researched study. But they do know that it definitely, if the, these uh, ectosteroids do definitely affect the estrogen B receptors. So it's uh, kind of interesting. So, you know, that's the way I'll leave it at that. Um, uh, well, if you said to me directly, would I suggest that you go out and purchase a uh, ectosteroid supplement in the hopes that it'll increase muscle mass? Right now, I would say no. Uh, I'd say there's not, you know, again, that American study showed no effect. Uh, I don't really think that they're that great. Contrary to the Russian studies, I don't think you're going to gain 7% lean mass in a little over a week from using these ectosteroids. I, I think they're kind of overhyped. I also question whether a lot of the uh, supplements touted to contain ectosteroids actually contain ectosteroids. Words, they might not even contain true ectosteroids. I mean, you can get it, you know, my, my suggestion is to stick with the food sources. Spinach and this quinona or whatever it's called, this grain, these things will provide you with the natural ectosteroids. They're a lot cheaper than the supplements. And by the way, if you want further information about supplements, exercise science, nutrition, 
hormonal therapy, anti-aging, fat loss research, ergogenic aids. There is no better source anywhere than my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. 40 to 50 pages each month, more like a monthly ebook. No BS, solid evidence-based research that also includes my 54 years of practical and, and empirical ex, uh, experience that I incorporate in every issue. I absolutely promise you, and you can check anybody who has subscribed to my newsletter, that you will learn something in every issue. I don't duplicate what's in the magazines or what's on the web or in blog, blog sites. Everything in there is original. Everything is new. And, and I guarantee you will benefit from and learn from my Applied Metabolics newsletter. If you want the best friend you'll ever have, go to a local shelter, adopt a dog. They're terrific. And uh, they, they, uh, they're more effective than any ectosteroids. <laughs>